have a light rain coming down. Uh, I've taken shelter underneath the maple tree on the uh, overhanging the patio of my sister's on the back of my sister's home in Roscoe, Illinois. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice here in the rain and staying dry, at least for the moment. Hello, RJ. Staying dry, at least for the moment, under this lush maple tree. Listening to the rain come down. It's almost like one of my... uh, meditative videos I listen to during the night to help me sleep or audios I mean yeah hello Will Bill Chill hello Brenda can I smell the rain not really I'm kind of still congested I've been fighting with a cold uh, over the last uh, almost the day I left <coughs> now I cough for effect had a little chest congestion a little nasal congestion it's starting to come loose means I'm healing Uh, but I can't really smell the rain yet I can hear it though sounds nice if I was doing a live coffee show I might just really pull within and kind of relax And uh, enjoy the uh, pleasant temperatures that we're having right now. And the pretty green and the flowers over there. and Some evidence that we had children playing right there. Got out a little (laughs) wading pool for my uh, little ones yesterday. Because it was kind of hot. And they were running around the house like crazy. Uh, They'd never, or I mean, Augie had been here before, but Eve had never been here before. And uh, the home's not child-proof. I mean, it's it's not like they keep knives lying around or scissors on the floor, but if you got uh, little toddlers and uh, they're in a place that they can find something to grab that they shouldn't be grabbing, they're going to do it. And they were just kind of running around the whole day <laughs> trying to find things to grab. So it's nice putting a little water in a pool and on a hot afternoon. And they did their mama didn't pack their uh, bathing suits, so we just stripped them down naked and threw a couple cups in there. And they were crunching these red Solo cups and dumping water and having a good time. It was nice. But, uh, yeah, good morning, good morning. Good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy, and uh, this is Coffee with Ken. It is Thursday morning. It is August 1st. I know some really cool people that were born in August. Some really top-notch people. (laughs) Uh, And it is 7.32 a.m. Happy uh, Thursday. It's a little show I've been doing for quite some time. It is a show about me talking. It is a show about me kind of sharing some of life's journey. And, uh, yeah, RJ says best day ever for a kid. Yeah, when you have all your cousins around, (coughs) I have a lot of fond memories of my childhood and, like, family get-togethers when there were uh, uh, tons and tons of cousins. And... uh, Yeah, no, I bet they had a really good time. But uh, anyway, again, this is a show about me sharing some of the lessons learned as we, as we, as I travel down uh, uh, my path that is life. Hopefully sharing some of the lessons, some of the things, some of the pointers I pick up. Some of the weird things I notice, sharing them with you, see if you find them weird show about me talking but anyway for those who've been watching a while you know it's not just a show about me talking it's also a show about me sharing my love of coffee and with that in mind i got a nice hot cup of coffee in front of me thank you will bill chill and i am so excited to have my first sip 
on this Thursday morning. It's just fairly late hour for me. My hope is uh, wherever you are, uh, whatever you're doing, uh, you got a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers to us. Uh, nice my dad's sitting in there and uh, as I'm pouring my cup I go dad I uh, gonna go do my show as I'm pouring almost the last bits of coffee out hope we'll have some more when I get back and I poured him the last couple ounces he goes that'll give me the energy to go make some more I go that's what I was hoping you'd say So let's have another sip. Cheers, Julie Flanagan. Mm. Carolyn wants to know if my boo-boos are healing. Uh, I, <laughs> slower than I'd like, to be honest with you. My knees, I mean, it still hurts, but my ankle still kind of hurts. And uh, it's still not looking very attractive. So I won't show it to you this morning because you're drinking your coffee. Brenda, my dad is 83. He's 83. He's going to be 84 this year. And uh, he went and worked out yesterday. I was very proud of him. He was dressed kind of in a t-shirt. He normally wears kind of a button-down short sleeve shirt in the summer at least. <coughs> and he said something. He goes, well, I'm off. That's all he was going to tell me. I go, well, where are you off to? Going to the gym. I think that's kind of cool. But, um, what was I saying? I don't know. I was just drinking coffee. Oh, so good. So good. So good. So, yeah, my uh, boo-boos are healing a little slower than I'd like. My ankle is still uh, swollen and kind of off-colored. Uh, got some big cuts around the ankle and the only reason I'm bringing it up because I know it's healing I know it'll be fine is my plan is to return to Chicago area tomorrow I'm in Roscoe which is I don't know 90 miles from Chicago or so uh, and I want to beat the pavement and find a job offer or two in the first few days and I would prefer not to go into any place limping <laughs> just a distraction <laughs> a distraction from the well-dressed man who smells nice and who is carries himself well and is taller than average and is, who is reasonably eloquent and presents himself in a way that uh, uh, hopefully the business owner or manager would want uh, his business represented or his or her business represented and if I come in with a limp, again, it's a distraction. A distraction I don't want. ZZ Top, Shark Drafts, man. Hey, that's me. Hello, Jason Baseball. Hello, George Matthew. Hello, Michelle and Jim. 73. Wonder if that means they're born in 73. Hey, how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? I've been bouncing between TikTok and Instagram over the last week, just kind of trying it out for fun, and uh, wanted to know if it's frustrating. One of my everyday viewers went over to TikTok and searched up some <laughs> hater pages about me and said, bah, and ran back to the safety that is Instagram. And uh, so he didn't have a very good experience over there. And I hope most of you are okay with it, uh, kind of alternating between platforms. I'd like to, you know, grow that platform. There's some good... Hey, Isaac, are you going to work? Yeah, I'm going to work. Wait, no Sammy today? No Sam. Are you bringing back green beans? Uh, probably not. All right, well, have a great day. We'll see you tonight. My nephew going to work. He's working as a farmer this summer. He and his brother who's going to be a senior in high school, uh, that was Isaac. My brother calls him Sir Isaac. I think he's playing on Isaac Newton 
who was knighted some many, many, many years ago and became a knight, or whatever it's called. <coughs> so he calls him Sir Isaac and works in a farm and comes back all dirty and picks green beans and shucks corn and does various things. He's saving up for his first year of college where he's going to be going in about a month and he's really excited about it. Uh, He's uh, really excited about RJ wants to know, how are the green beans? Well, the green beans were good. We had them in a, uh, what did we have them in? Some sort of, what do you call it when you, it's not a stew, but they kind of throw everything in the food, in the pot. And as my dad said, the green beans were al dente. I might have preferred them a little more cooked. And I haven't had any just raw intended to be eaten raw, but I think they're pretty darn good. I'd say they're pretty darn good. Shepherd's pie. No, shepherd's pie is delicious. I mean, they're all delicious. It's delicious. They had chicken and stuff. It's almost like a stew. We could just call it a stew. Mm. Oh. But, uh, Anyway, it's Thursday morning. Can still hear the birds a little bit over there. Almost felt the birds talking to me because I mentioned it and I heard a singular bird voice crying out to me. Chirp, chirp. But anyway, I saw my kids yesterday. Would have liked to have seen my older girls longer. They had things to do so they could only be here a couple hours. Uh, but my little ones got in right before they headed out, which was nice that, that we all got to, or they got to see each other. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, I was nervous when the little ones were coming, thought they might not recognize their data, even though they've been FaceTiming their data a couple times a uh, day for the last several months. And, uh, I opened one of the side doors and I didn't know who was going to be on that side, and it was Augie. And uh, uh, he looked littler than I thought he'd be. I thought he'd, I don't know, I was picturing him all grown up and big, and I was only gone for two months, but I thought he'd be bigger. And honestly, it made me happy that he wasn't bigger, uh, that he was the same little, cute little, my nugget of love that he's always been, and wasn't afraid of his data was probably confused why dad is suddenly here uh but it was really nice and i got him out of his car seat and his mama was getting eve out of the car seat on the other side and i walked around and had them both in my arms and carried them in and was really uh proud for moment for me to be uh, carrying my two little ones in uh to a whole house full of family and uh <coughs> they had a great time running around uh, my sister and dad have two little dogs that are cute and fuzzy and tend to bark a lot. But I think the kids thought they were neat. And little Eve was doing barking imitations and was running all over and was eating cookies and eating cherries and eating... What else was I feeding her? Pretty much anything I was thinking about eating, she'd want to open her up her mouth. And so would Augie. Augie had come by in passing with a wide open mouth going as I shoved something in and he'd keep running to cause chaos wherever he was headed. And, uh, uh, yeah, it was a nice day. And I was sad to see him go last night. Uh, their mom took him home and back to her house in Naperville. And it was hard, uh, let them go again, but I'll see him again tomorrow, if not sooner. And my plan is to head back uh, that way tomorrow. Jason asked if I uh, always wear... Hi, Morgie. My daughter Morgie's on. Everyone say hi to Morgie. She might get embarrassed and probably hang up. But my daughter Morgie just hopped on. Uh, Jason asked if I always wear a watch on my right hand. Uh, no, I don't, and I never wear a watch on my right hand. Uh, it's actually on my left, but it, I think you're seeing like a mirror image, and uh, uh, it uh, is probably confusing sometimes to the audience because I'm left-handed, 
and I wear a watch on my left hand, and this is my left hand. And I believe it looks like my right hand to you. <laughs> Say hi, Morgie. Is Morgie still there? I hope she is. Hope I didn't scare her away. She might never come back. She might never come back. I mean, it's quarter to eight. She's a 15-year-old young lady. She's uh, surprised she's up. She might have to uh, work today. She's uh, working at her first real job as a lifeguard at uh, the neighborhood swimming pool. And uh, yeah. uh, her mom and I lived, not her mama, uh, Morgie, and, or not Morgie, even Augie's mama and I lived in a neighborhood in Naperville with a uh, swimming pool as well. In hot, hot days, it felt so good to go there. I always felt a little bad for the lifeguards because, I don't know, sitting and baking in the heat doesn't seem super fun. And they take their job seriously, as they should, and will be scanning the pool, making sure that there's no rule breaking or no people struggling in the water or nothing that needs attended to. But uh, I think that would be a harder job than many think. I think a lot of young men and women probably think it would be the dream job, getting a suntan and hanging out in your bathing suit all day. But <clears throat> I'm sure like a lot of jobs, it's more work than you'd expect and more challenging than you'd expect. Hello, Jack Taylor is asking me where am I at today. I'm in Roscoe, Illinois, at my sister's for one more day. Uh, I think my brother's headed back to Texas tomorrow, so I'll probably hang out one more day here. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I'm at Roscoe. Sheila says, as a previous lifeguard, we love the sun and the heat. Okay, okay. Maybe when you're young, you do more. Uh, Maybe you still do as you age. I don't know. I haven't really wanted to work on my tan a lot for a number of years. Used to be a big thing. And yeah, I think it, you look better with a healthy glow. I used to go past it, of course, and golf and go on a lot of vacations, so you would not wear enough suntan lotion or hats, baseball hats, or even the wide brim Stetson hats that we dreamed of purchasing in my stay in Wyoming. I'd feel real funny wearing one out here, I think. I'd feel real funny wearing like a cowboy hat or a Stetson hat out here. Yeah. No sooner did I mention sirens and now multiple cops are flying around. It never ends. Gino Thorne, where do you live, Gino Thorne, that has multiple cops flying around? One of my viewers is distracted by sirens. I wonder if they live in a high crime area or there's ambulances or what have you. I like to think my show touches people of very diverse backgrounds. Hello, Chip. RJ wants to know, will I get a new P.O. box? Yes, I will. I really enjoyed it. It was one of, I I had several favorite things about uh, Yellowstone and Wyoming. But I really like getting the P.O. box. I thought it was a good value. I thought it was a real good value. I think it was $40 for six months. And I didn't stay there six months, so they uh, returned some of the money. Uh, My experience with the P.O. box was positive. It was you know, I didn't have a lot of places to go in uh, Yellowstone. I kind of alternated between my dorm room, which wasn't very exciting, and my place of work, which also wasn't super exciting. So every once in a while, I'd miss, mix up my straight walk back to and from the cafeteria to my dorm uh, and go, hey, <laughs> I'm going to go check out the post office today. And I walk around my walk would be about 100 yards maybe 200 yards further excitedly grab my key 
put it up to P.O. Box 701. I think just saying P.O. Box is fun. I think if you wanted to send mail to like Sesame Street or Mr. Rogers when I was a kid, I think they used to say the address at the end and it'd be P.O. Box, whatever. New York, New York, or wherever it was filmed. And, uh, yeah, I liked having a P.O. Box. And I know where I'm staying for the next month won't be a permanent location. I think I'd still like to get some mail. Hello. I don't know. I don't know. I'll probably get a new P.O. Box. I did enjoy the experience. Has, any, has anybody else out there ever had a P.O. Box? How'd you like it? It was my first, and I thought it was awesome. Oh, it tastes so good. Hello, Richard Lane. Uh, Jason said he had a P.O. Box on Kwajalein. Physical sensation, a key opening. Yeah, there's something exciting about it. It feels like you're opening a safe. And there could be some magic treasures. And occasionally there were magic treasures. Although the magic treasures didn't come in the form of magic treasures. They came in the form of a little slip of paper that said package delivered. Sometimes I would even mix miss the little slip because it would be laying flush on the uh, bottom of the P.O. box. But then I'd come back a day or two later and find it and go, ooh, (laughs) I wonder what this might be. Will it be a new coffee mug for me? Will it be a new baseball hat, an Illinois baseball hat for me? Will it be a sweet check by written by a woman who I think was named Rebecca in Utah? Uh, sending me ten dollars as a start to my RV fund. So I'm getting mail, especially when it's not all junk mail. Getting mail's changed a lot over the years. You know, I think people probably aren't as excited about getting mail anymore because there's so many advertisements and there's so many yucky things that people that have had an interesting life might get. Attorney's letters or, I don't know, bills. Bah, who likes bills? We all get bills. Nobody likes bills. Feels good paying off bills. It's like you're checking them off your list. You know, okay, hey, I'm going to pay my phone bill on time. No late fee. I'm ahead of the game. I think sometimes maybe you need to get behind the game to appreciate being ahead of the game. Uh, uh, Roger, I'm not so sure. I'm in, Roger said I'm in close with the Boy Scouts. <clears throat> I'm not so sure how close I'm how tight I am with the Boy Scouts of America. I mean, I I like them. I was a Boy Scout. I took my stepson to Boy Scout camps and stuff, but I'm not that involved. I still think I know the Boy Scout uh, code and the hand signal. But yeah, I don't think uh, the popcorn funds are going to be uh, given... I'm not sure what they would do with them. Ah, oh, the joy of everyday life, yes. <laughs> that popcorn's expensive. That popcorn's expensive. You know, I know it's for charity. I know it's for the Boy Scouts, and I know it funds their camping and whatever else they can do, and maybe, I don't know, if they donate some, but maybe the Boy Scouts of America is a fundraiser of itself. It probably is. Uh, but they're pricey. You, you got to either love the Boy Scouts or really love popcorn to pay twenty or thirty dollars for a bag of popcorn. Uh, was it better Girl Scout cookie? What's better, the girls? I mean, uh, the Girl Scout cookies are better. They're pricey too. 
but they're cookies. I mean, they're pricey too, but they're cookies. I mean, obviously, the Girl Scout cookies are better. Sorry, Boy Scouts. Oh. But anyway, I don't know how much I have for you today. It's a cloudy uh, Thursday morning in Roscoe, Illinois. Uh, the grass is green. The trampoline back in the back of the yard got some use. I'm going to show you what the trampoline looks like. It was getting bounced around by uh, my nephews and my stepkids. There's the back garage. Doesn't get a ton of use. I mean, gets some use. It stores things, but it doesn't have cars. There's a fire pit in the back. Here's the patio. Here's the back of my sister's house. Neighbor's garage. Lots of trees. Neighbor's yard. It's nice being here. Oh, it's nice being here. Going to be a little nervous heading back. Uh, this is kind of my uh, vacation between... Yellowstone and the real world back home. Uh, hoping my ankle heals a little bit between now and tomorrow. Hoping when I hop on my bike and ride back to Naperville, I have safe travels. Hoping I get everything accomplished I need to in the next first several days. I don't have a huge itinerary. Get checked into my residence. Pick up a button-down white shirt at uh, my ex-wife's home, pick up my laptop computer at my buddy's home, get showered and shaved and dressed and go into my top three restaurants I'd like to work at that I think uh, me would fit best in, see if any of them are hiring and interested in me hopefully they will be I think they will be we'll see and uh, hopefully get a job in the next uh, few days and hopefully start right away uh, I'll be bored lonely ready to for work uh, I was kind of enjoying the job back in Yellowstone waiting tables I was enjoying the money for sure and enjoying uh, knowing that I'd get nice paychecks every couple weeks and uh uh, felt productive, felt good, felt, uh, you know, some might not think waiting tables is uh, whatever, but for me, I enjoyed it and uh, felt good making customers smile and making customers uh, laugh. Casey's General said, if not, there's always jobs you know where. Casey's, that's on my short list. Casey's General is the store I really discovered on my ride out to Yellowstone. And they're very popular in Iowa and Nebraska. And there was a lot of them in Minnesota as well on my ride back. And I'm impressed with the store. And uh, they hire general managers there. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be a entry-level Casey's general employee for sure. That wouldn't cover my wants personally or professionally. Um but I do think the store is impressive. And if one did uh, uh, open up in Naperville, it'd be kind of interesting uh, <coughs> working there at some level. <laughs> Hopefully a higher level than a lower level. But I know you got to start somewhere, but I don't know if I have the want or luxury uh, of starting somewhere. Again, I worked at Target about a year back and started as low man on the totem pole and realized my direct two bosses ahead of me had been there like 18 and 20 years. And I think uh, the opportunity for me that would have been in Target would have been uh, getting a job right out of school as a college grad, at, as an intern there or something, work for a season and then get put in a the fast track up the corporate ladder, if you will. At 55, soon to be 56. Uh, 
yeah. <laughs> Ken is 45 to 52 years old. Is that a question? There's a question mark at it. I'm something like that. Oh. I do have kids. I do have kids. I do have kids. I have lots of kids. I have four kids. Should I post it on a picture? I'll post a picture of me and my kids uh, on a story on Instagram. I'm not sure where that story goes or who sees it or what have you. But I'll post it there. You guys can see me and my kids. To be honest, we took the picture. It's probably not the world's most professional looking picture. But I was fortunate to just have the two girl, older girls want to take a picture with me. And uh, I had uh, my two little ones were wanting to run around and cause chaos in the house. And they were wiggling. <laughs> and you can tell, like, Augie's smiling, but he's going wiggling in his sister's arms. Or my arms. I forget who was holding him. But it's a cute picture. I posted it on Facebook this morning as well. Yeah. What's the coffee? Uh, I'll tell the story. I wasn't going to tell the story. So I'm riding across the country. I'd ridden 513 miles almost when I pulled into a grocery store I knew in my sister's town. And... I stopped. I wanted a bag of pumpkin spice coffee pretty bad. And this store did not have the pumpkin spice yet. And I stopped and picked up a bag of Sumatra. Starbucks. Oh, yeah. I wanted that, too. And brought it back to my sister's house. And we made a pot of Sumatra. And I went away about my business. And uh, came back into the kitchen a couple hours later and... My dad almost proudly was bragging how he'd taken the bag of Sumatra and poured it into the tub of Folgers that uh, he uses at home. So he did a mixed breed of coffee. (laughs) So that's what I'm drinking right now. Part Sumatra, part Folgers. It still tastes pretty good. Tastes better than the cafeteria coffee. Thank you, Lord, for my blessings. And I'm blessed with a lot of different uh, things. I'm blessed with good health and beautiful kids and beautiful family and lots of friends and green grass and birds chirping and hot coffee and uh, lots of opportunity in front of me down the path that is life. Roger, I agree. I agree. I agree with what you said. Ever drink espresso? No, I don't really drink espresso, Mary McDillo. Uh, I'm a little cheap. <clears throat> so, like, when I get coffee at Starbucks, I like to buy coffee that they're going to refill for free. And uh, My nephew was kind of mocking capitalism in Starbucks the other day and saying how it's like $10 every time you go. And it's not, because I go get a tall dark roast with uh, cream in it for $2.86 and a venti ice water and can spend two or three hours people watching, enjoying the AC, uh, getting some work done, editing videos, uh, yeah, relaxing. And uh, I think it's a great use of time. So, anyway, let's have one more sip of coffee. I noticed I was editing a video last night, and it was a long video. And I again, I repost uh, these as shorts, reels, and TikToks. I'm about three and a half weeks behind. And sometimes I'll get on heavier topics like sobriety or mental health or divorce or financial stuff. Or uh, I'll tell you what gets really gets the dander up. And I've talked about it before. But you want to not even intentionally get a lot of angry things said about you. Say something about the real estate business. 
after being a realtor 17 years. Boy, some of my most popular videos I posted two months ago, and every you know, 10 times a day I'll get some mean comment. I don't think they understand, because humans will read those comments, and if I say something about the business, for them to come back and say something mean, and what I'm saying isn't mean, it's my opinion, and it's true from a guy that did it for 17 years, but if they're going to come back and call me names or call me mean things, they're not doing the industry justice. Because consumers are going to read that. And, you know, they should have better things to do than be saying mean comments to some guy that they don't know the question the way their industry works. They should have better things to do. I mean, we all should have better things to do than hopping online and saying mean things to other people. Apparently some of us don't. Uh, do I Have I considered leading a support group for people that have left the business? I'll tell you what, it's hard. I think you're in it. And uh, you kind of feel trapped because you're going, hey, I don't want to work nine to five. I work... You know, a lot. I'm not saying they don't work a lot. I'm saying most of the work they do isn't marketing the their listings or spending time with buyers. Most of the work they do is going to Chamber of Commerce meetings or uh, networking groups or parties and telling as many people they can that they're a realtor and gathering contact information and following up. And that's my issue with the business. <laughs> I mean, I see value in realtors. I think it could be, they could, I think the business would be more efficient, not the way it is, because there's too many spending too much time trying to find clients. And it just seems like a, if you've got to work that hard, and again, I only did fairly okay, but I worked hard at it and only did fairly okay. And after 17 years, I realized, holy crap, I could work. If I worked this hard at anything else, if I worked this hard at anything else, I would have been a lot more successful. With this phone I got, why do I need a magnetic calendar or a recipe list in your mail or mail at all? Because it works. Because in the time that you take, you go to the mailbox, you see the marketing piece that I might send have sent you, and you throw it in the recycling bin or the garbage, you're still holding on to my name and number and remembering me as a realtor. And it works. It works so small, though. You know, I'd send out a mailer. My dad used to be in printing, and I'd send out a mailer you know, 10,000 mailers and he'd want to know, he'd think I got like five listings off of it. You wouldn't get any, you know, you might get a couple inquiries the first time, but it takes repetition and duration and longevity uh, for it to work real quick. Good morning, Kelly R. Thank you for hopping on. Uh, But I'm just signing off, Kelly R. I appreciate you. Kelly R is one of my followers over on uh, TikTok as well, and I appreciate that. I'd like to see both platforms grow. This show, for some reason, is starting to get seen more on replay on YouTube. And I like to give the back scene. I'll post these on YouTube when I'm done. And over the last couple days, I've gotten uh, over 60 hours of viewage. Uh, for each of the uh, videos, which is about 200 views in 60 hours in a day. And I think that's pretty good. It's a new record for me. And I'm not sure what's causing it. Uh, but it feels good knowing I'm going to post this video uh, on YouTube and might have 200 plus people watch it taped and over 60 hours of viewership. And want to continue to see that grow and continue to do what I do. And while I do, I'll get back to Naperville, see my kids and love on my kids and wait tables for uh, 
uh, uh, some amount of hours uh, to cover the financial responsibility. Jason says I'm approaching critical mass. I'll tell you what, sometimes it takes a lot longer to hit critical mass than you'd think. It did it in real estate, too. I kept thinking, hey, next year I'm going to just explode. It never exploded in the real estate world. I mean, I did, again, pretty well a couple of years. Uh, but it never exploded. But I do think the growth is a little slower and steadier uh, in terms of content creation. And I think one day I'm going to wake up and I'm going to not have 200 views, but I'm going to have 1,000 views. And I'm going to have 200 hours of watch time. And not that that's all the anything in the world or not like I'm going to have a party for that. Uh, but I do see it growing every day. Uh, and if it grows every day, uh, I don't know, it's got to be a good thing. <laughs> so let's have one more sip of coffee. Roger said, I'd love some sort of meet and greet table at the last fling. <laughs> I have thoughts on that. I used to want to market locally, Roger, and you're a local guy. Uh, and I used to give out these cups to people, and I still like doing that because that felt good. But I realized the real power of this show isn't me meeting somebody along the stretch of highway that is life and saying, hey, I do a coffee podcast every morning on Instagram, because they may or may not want it. Uh, they may or may not need it. They may or may not care about men's mental health or sobriety or divorce or financial highs and lows. Their groove might be a totally different groove. But if you put out, if you're genuine and you put your stuff out there consistently, somebody's going to identify with it. And what's cool about the Internet is uh, your audience can find you. And yeah, there's ways to expedite that process and hashtags and keywords and all that stuff. But I think a lot of that might be smoke and mirrors and distraction. I had a guy edit a video I did. I get a lots of offers of people that say they love my content. They would like to edit my videos for me. And I did a video uh, about, I don't know, four weeks ago talking about how I got the job in uh, Wyoming and what I do and how it works and how you get paid. And he edited it up and made it look cool. And I go, I'm not sure what I do with this. I mean, it looked like a great kit commercial for Zantera, which was the company I was working for. But my goal wasn't to make a great commercial for Zantera. <coughs> it was just kind of to give the information out. Yeah, maybe it'd be seen more. And maybe I could be a spokesperson <laughs> for something. But I wasn't sure what I'd do for with it. And I don't know how you as the viewer would have found more joy in this highly edited, smoother, polished video of mine. I, don't know. I would have thought Coppola edited your videos because they're so good. Hey, Feel and Joy says, one year sober tomorrow. That's how I found you. Thanks for being inspirational. Oh, well, I so appreciate you saying that, Feel and Joy. Congratulations to you. Maybe you get a referral fee to place jobs. Yeah, maybe, Casey. Do you get a referral fee? To if I, How much do you get as a referral fee? Would they hire me as general manager? Hello. I have very limited retail experience, but I'm bald. And I have some uh, gray in my facial hair. Does that qualify me as general manager for Casey's General? And I like pizza. And I like donuts. And I like the store. And I like Naperville. We could all come together. One slice of breakfast pizza. But I'm bald. I look at that as an asset. I look at that as an asset. I think the facial hair is at a pretty good length right now. Bald, smooth, like a seal. <laughs> Maybe at the last fling, instead of handing out coffee with Ken paraphernalia, I can rub my head for <laughs> a dollar? A dime? A quarter? A penny? Ten dollars? Get a lot of big, fat, hairy men coming up and rubbing my head. Rah! <laughs> I mean, for 
for enough money, I, I would allow it. Uh, <laughs> have I tried Rogaine? No, uh, I don't even know. I may have 30 years ago, but I have no interest in that. Uh, do I respond to any of those mean comments on my real estate videos? I try not to respond to mean comments. Uh, I found I used to be able to get dragged into stuff. Somebody would say something mean to me and I'd get my pissed off back and I'd get angry and say mean things. And I have a lot of people saying mean things at me for all sorts of things. They don't like my smile. They make fun of my teeth. They say I look old and wrinkly. Uh, they make fun of my intelligence. I don't know. Now I'm starting to laugh at it. Uh, I don't know. I think if you get comfortable in your own skin and what you're doing enough, uh, you don't have to respond to negativity. And, uh, I think that's what I'm striving for. Because again, in life, I always had good intentions but somebody mean could come across my path and say something mean to me and I'd get dragged into a fight and not be the best version of myself. And uh, the best version of myself is learning how to turn the other cheek and ignore hostility or negativity or hate in any form. And I'm still working on it and sometimes I'll still get ticked off or bummed out or upset or something will hurt my feelings. But I'm working on it and I'm getting better. Lefty said he bartended first six-hour shift yesterday. Very sick. Hmm. Hope you were serving the alcohol. You weren't drinking it. <laughs> I hear employers don't enjoy <laughs> if the bartender is drinking half of the bottle he serves. Oh. Yeah, you're right, Roger. But anyway, I'm looking forward to getting some more coffee and taking on my day. And I want to thank you guys so much for joining on this Thursday. I'll probably do one more show. It'll be over on TikTok tomorrow uh, morning uh, from Roscoe. And I will pack up my bag, do my laundry, pack up my scooter, hop on my bike, ride back to where I'm going to be staying. And... Uh, Kickstart... Uh, uh, I don't want to call it a new life because it's not a new life. How often do I do these? I pretty much go live uh, every morning, either on Instagram or TikTok over the last week. And uh, uh, I'm headed back to Naperville Downers Grove area tomorrow. And I'm going to find a job. And I'm going to get that job, and I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to have a great attitude. And I am uh, going to do my best and uh, keep doing my show and keep loving on my kids and keep moving forward and keep feeling good and keep drinking my coffee and keep enjoying the day. And I hope you enjoy your Thursday as well. I hope you had a great night's sleep. I hope your week is going to go well. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, hope you're feeling good. I hope you're loving yourself. I hope you're forgiving yourself. And as always, I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.